Hey guys, what's going on? It's Delconic here, and today we're going to be talking about the Super Strike Special that's going to be going on from August 7th. So, I mean, it's a little bit early right now, but I did want to let you guys know so that way you guys can get prepped for this. Um, there's going to be a special here. If you haven't seen my other video, I'm going to go over it real quick. The 100 cost limit for all the Super Strike events is going to be removed. Player rank experience is increased per level completion. Character experience has been increased for per boss battle. Uh, character drop rate has been increased, and there's twice the amount of awakening medals that have been dropped that can be dropped. So instead of getting one, you'll get two. Now, what does this mean? Especially if you guys have already collected all of your Super Strike characters, there's really no incentive for you, right? Well, we're gonna go ahead and talk about what could possibly be a good incentive for you to go and run some of these events. Uh, now, it just kind of actually turns out that the Agility Day is going to be the best day to actually run this, uh, just because of the characters that are involved here. But since the Hunter cost limit is currently removed, and it doesn't really matter too much if you have an OP team, it just makes it a little bit easier for you to just run through the events for that Hunter cost, uh, the fact that you get a double character drop rate is going to make this a lot easier. Um, so what am I talking about? I'm rambling right now. Um, essentially, we have a whole bunch of cards that are going to be available uh, that can feed into super attacks of other characters. We're actually going to move this kid Vegeta all the way over here because we're not talking about him yet. We're going to save him for the last. So first one we're going to talk about is a Saiyan Elite Vegeta. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a card review here. We're just going to be talking about the cards. Uh, Saiyan Elite Vegeta, he's just a basic Vegeta card. Now this card can feed into so many cards. I think there's about three total cards that you could use to raise him into. Now remember, Seven Awakening Medals, Doken Awakens him. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and grind this guy out. You're going to use the seven medals from his event to Doken Awaken him into his SSR variant. Once you do that, you can Z-Awaken him to an Ultra Rare for a 100% chance to feed him into a number of cards. First card we're going to talk about is the one that's currently available for the event. Now, I would not highly recommend doing this for this card unless you already have the other the others at 100%, like um, at uh, 10 Super Attack. Uh, this guy really isn't that worth it in my opinion. I also apologize. I forgot to mention this in yesterday's video I, I remember after I posted up the video I was about to pass out and go to bed. I was like, oh crap. I forgot the Vegeta's farmable <clears throat> I did have a couple of you guys remind me in the comments below. So thank you for that. I appreciate it um, Anyway, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it But he you can feed the agility Vegeta into him the next one is going to be the one that's currently not available on global But if you're on the JP side, it might be good for you um, this is the Pleasant Progress of Ambition Vegeta. He is the Extreme Intelligence type support unit. Now, he would be my number one choice, honestly, that I would recommend getting those Vegetas up to SSR form for, just because he's a really good unit. And if you're going to be running an Extreme Intelligence team, um, you're going to want him to hit harder. He does Supreme Damage, so at Super Attack 10, he's going to be doing a little bit more damage. I'd recommend saving, saving those guys for him when he becomes available. Um, the next one is the Exerted Ability of Vegeta. He does have a Doken Awakening on the global side right now. It's just that the Kid Buu event currently isn't available. At least the 7 uh, Metal Drop isn't available. You can run the uh, single drops if you want to. Um, I, you know, I, I recommend it. He's not horrible right now. What passive skill is attack plus 15% per QR obtained. He is a super type. Um, you can get him up to Super Attack 10. It just, he does extreme, extreme, yeah, extreme damage here. When you Doken Awaken him, he gets up to Supreme Damage, and he raises his own attack for three turns, and he cr increases his attack by 20% per Intelligence Key Orb obtained. So having him at Super Attack 10 is definitely beneficial. You just want to do it to his SSR variant before you transcend him. Um, so those are the, the three Vegetas you could actually go into. I don't think, yeah, there's no other uh, Vegeta. So those are the three. I would recommend uh, the Intelligence one and saving up for the other Intelligence one. Both of them are really good cards uh, to feed into to get them to Super Attack 10. I'd recommend it anyway. Um, if you have the time, go ahead and grind it out, and by all means, I'd recommend doing it. The next one, as you guys probably already saw, was the Paikuhan. Paikuhan, same thing as Vegeta Strike event. Go ahead, get him, get nine, actually 18 of him if you want, if you have the time. Um, Doken Wake him to his SSR variant. And when you Z Awaken, he has a 100% chance of feeding into two different units. First one is the current Paikuhan, the one that was just recently recently released. Um, he has he's a really good card, honestly. I would recommend doing him first. Uh, the strength one is probably the best one you can feed him into. His supreme damage greatly lowers attack, but that passive skill, attack plus 60%, all enemies uh, defense minus 20%. Now this is his SSR variant. He does Doken Awaken, and when he Doken Awakens, it's attack plus 70%. So that attack plus 70% and supreme damage modifier, he's going to be hitting a lot harder. I, If you have the time, like I said before, another agility unit because it's going to be a lot of agility grinding, um, I'd recommend getting him first. The other Paikohan though, the technique one, if you have him, he's not that bad of a unit to get him up to Super Attack 10. 
Um, right now, yeah, I believe he's only uh, dokenable on the JP side, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, because it looks like it's the Gogeta event, Super Gogeta event. But um, he's not that bad. Greatly lowers attack. He is self-sufficient. Key plus three attack plus 2,500. Um, I don't know how viable he's actually going to be on a uh, on an actual hero uh, a hero uh, technique team, but he does have fierce battle shocking speed, so that's not horrible. And he is, like I said, very self reliant. Uh, supreme damage to the enemy. It's a super tech ten. He will be hitting harder. I mean, I'd recommend it just because he's a decent unit, uh, but definitely the strength variant over the technique variant if you have both of them. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is the TN. Now, the TN that is currently available as an SSR isn't available in the global side, but he will be, so I'm just going to talk about it real quick. Same thing as the other one, Doken Awaken him, his, uh, his strike variant to SSR, Z Awaken him. And in the future, we will have this desperate, or should have, this desperate super attack TN. This is the technique variant of the super technique support unit um, that we talked about with the Intelligence Extreme Vegeta. <clears throat> Get him to super attack 10. He does supreme damage to the enemy, he lowers attack, he's not like the most amazing unit in the game, but he does do supreme damage, he is a support unit, if you grab him and you have a hero technique team, chances are you're going to want to run him on that team for that attack and defensive boost. So I would recommend getting these TNs to <clears throat> their SSR variant, um, Z waking them, and keeping at least 9 on standby for this SSR TN, he's going to be really viable. Um, the next one, we're moving into the Technique territory, it's the Piccolo. Now, the Piccolo, as you know, you guys probably already know, LR Piccolo is probably the primary one that everyone, that comes to everyone's mind. Um, you, when you Doken Awaken his Strike character, get him Z-Awakened, and then there's actually a decent chunk, there's four Piccolos. Um, Ace of the Sleeve Piccolo, which, um, is, I forgot, uh, this is the one from the Baba Shop, uh, you get from the Baba's Treasures. So, I wouldn't recommend doing this to him unless you, like, are just bored and have your others at Super Attack 10. Um, this one is one of the characters from the Baba Shop. Damage received minus 50% when guard is activated, so he's a real good tank. Um, yeah, he's really good if you're going up against an agility only team, a mono agility team, because he's going to be blocking like crazy. Uh, Super Attack 10, I guess, if you would like to, he's only huge damage, so it's not going to do too much. Uh, the next one is going to be the Physical Piccolo. Again, he is a. Um, he's more. All the Piccolo cards are essentially tanks. Um, he's a decent unit to use him on, sort of. Uh, he has a really good passive when he gets Doken Awaken, where he buffs the defense of 70% for all allies. So he makes all of your allies tank like crazy. Uh, when the Super Go Tanks comes out, uh, the, the physical one for the Heroes team, he becomes a really good unit because he literally makes like everyone hit for almost like they hit you for almost nothing. You know, a 70% increase to all allies when you have a double 120 lead. Pretty damn insane, so you might want to consider that. It's only extreme damage, it's not going to do a lot. Um, he's someone who I could recommend. I don't, wouldn't say he's my number one choice, but he's definitely on a list of priority to get to Super Attack 10 just because he might be on your teams uh, in the future. The next one is the one that just got their Doken Awakening on the JP side. I did a review of that, so if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check that video out. This card is actually really good. Um, he get, this is like one of the very few Piccolos that actually does a lot of damage inherently from his passive. Um, he's probably my number one choice, other than maybe the LR Piccolo, for getting to Super Attack 10. So, if you have him, attack plus 60% when HP is 80% or below. I don't like that uh, restrictive passive right there. But when he Doken Awakens, um, you can go ahead and see over here what it loads. Uh, intelligent Warrior Piccolo. You're only going to have one choice to run on a hero intelligence team just because they, him and the LR Piccolo share the same name. But attack and defense up plus 80% when HP is 80% or below. So he's going to be doing a lot more damage than any of the other Piccolos. So getting him up to Super Attack 10 would probably be a priority for you, should be a priority for you. Um, it's on a technique day as well. So, I mean, it, there's not a lot of cards unless they make all the super strike available to you um, all the time this one is probably gonna be a little bit easier to choose the technique piccolo over anyone else um but yeah so that's that this is the piccolo that i would say number one and then obviously we have the lr piccolo if you haven't done so already uh by the way remember again these have to be all their ssr variants they can't be the transcendent ultra rare otherwise it won't give you a hundred percent guarantee on um, when you ultra when you z awake them for the ultra rare so uh, Demon King Piccolo successor. Um, just make sure you go up and grab some for him if you haven't done so already, if you plan on getting your LR Piccolo. But again, the Intelligent Warrior Piccolo. So just to wrap it up, we have the um, uh, Agility Vegeta, the Agility Paikuhan, um, the Agility Tien. So those are the three agility events you're going to want to grind out. Um, then you have the Technique Piccolo. So 
I mean, honestly, I think that's actually it for Technique. So yeah, he's the only one. I'm pretty sure that's all the other characters that are actually farmable from Strike. If I forgot any, let me know down in the comments below. I'll go ahead and do a follow-up on that. Uh, but make sure you grind them out. The reason why I have the Kid Vegeta one here is because this one hasn't gotten his Doken Awakening on the global side. I believe there was talk about him getting a Doken Awakening um, during the celebration this month or during the month of August. So if it is, there's obviously going to be a lot of hype behind it. There's going to be uh, banners probably talking about making sure you get him. Uh, if that is the case, I don't know if they're going to make him give him the same thing as like the removal of the 100 cost cap limit and a double uh, card drop rate. They might just keep him standard. But if not, you don't have him. He Doken Awakens to a very, very good unit. I'll probably go a little bit more in depth if it, when this does happen. But his Doken Awakening is agility type key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 30%, or HP and attack plus 30%. So he is essentially a mini... Uh, a mini god lead for agility units. There's no defense, but the HP and attack is really what we're looking at right here. Um, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, so he's going to be a really good leader for your super strike teams if you're going up against one of the LR events. Uh, now, I did want to state with the LR events that both of the LR events should be, well, maybe not both, but the LR Goku should be getting his additional stage added on. There's no guarantee on that. Let's go back ahead up over here. So this is the Legendary Campaign. I went over this in the other review as well. When this becomes available, I'll be doing this a little bit more in depth. Um, but just keep this in mind. Uh, this LR Goku should have his additional stage added on. When it does, he's going to be a strength... I mean, he's going to be a uh, physical type unit. So you want to get your strength characters up to par. So that means Grandpa Gohan should be your focus because he is the mini god type leader for the strike event characters and, all, and for the strength type characters. Um, when this Goku comes out, you should be able to grind him out without a problem if you have him as your leader. So focus on the strength characters. Uh, and for the Frieza, when he comes out, he let's see, because the, the Goku's technique, the Frieza should get an agility stage added. So you're going to want the technique. So you want technique and you want strength char characters. Get all those strike event characters grinded out while you have the ability to do so. And all the characters that I just went over. But hey guys, that's it. I just wanted to go over this with you just so that way you are aware of what's going on. Uh, take advantage of this while you can because it's it's a pain in the butt. You could do it if you know when there is no cap uh, cap limit on or when there is a cap limit on the events. This just makes it a lot easier because there's not, so it makes the the farming a lot more doable. Um, may, who knows? Maybe we'll have half stamina on that as well because we should be getting it on the Goku event. But anyway, guys, thank you for joining me here today. Hit that sub button if you're new here, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.